Sena mgele lagu dijo lebo pilo on SABC2. This is your favorite show. Ngoba, it's the only show etilang a food consciousness na my health issues. Every week sin memo kutini sibuza noma yi ina nifunigi ya zingo gula. Besige tina stola ongo ngon ngon dobeitu kutba pendule imi buzo ye. Namsanje skulo menge childhood obesity. The statistics are shocking. One in four girls and one in five boys between the ages of two and 14 were overweight. This is why I'm saying we're talking about childhood obesity, but it's a very important issue. By it, we polite more. We make a video on our Twitter page with a few questions about the topic. Le, the young, we nembuzo eng ita eng ita ndugu ibuza about childhood obesity. May you please explain it to me what is childhood obesity and how can I avoid it? Sister Hamba says she's not polite. To learn more about her, before spending the nembuzo work. My name is Polite Moyo. I live in Tembisa. I've got 29 years old. Most of the time, I like playing with my kids. I've got two kids and a long una unum zimba from Amgani Vele, Begakula Num Zimba, Wake, Mina Jogusela, Kwami, Bengi, Umdana, Uba Num Zimba, as a Semgan. And uh, when she's growing up, she was going to lose weight. But now, I, I, I didn't know it was it's, it's going to be a big problem for the child to gain weight so much. The young Bengi Kailanji Uguti, Ningi Kazisele Uguti, childhood obesity, because why he and the Gibona Ganjan Uguti Umdana Una, your lay child obesity. We are joined by clinical dietitian Ujana Bose, who will be answering polite questions. Please join our conversation go Twitter at DJ Libupilo, go Facebook DJ Libupilo, or on email DJ Libupilo at sabc.co.za. We'll be right back after this obese commercial break. Welcome back. Sister Sasson Kelagu Dijo Lebo Pilo. Nam Sanjus Kulumang food and childhood obesity because our viewers question from Polite Moyo is exactly about that. Clinical dietitian Ujena Bowles will be giving us valuable answers to polite questions. Let us find out more about Jenna before we continue talking to her. Good morning, Jenna. Thank you for spending your morning with us. Absolute pleasure. Thank you. Before the break, we heard that Polite is a mother, and she recently started reading AMA articles about the increase of obesity in children, especially in South Africa. So she now fears for Nganyag. She has specific questions that she posted on our Twitter page. So we'll be answering those questions with our guest, Ujena. You can also join our conversation on Twitter at DJ Lebupilo or on Facebook at DJ Lebupilo or on email DJ Lebupilo at sabc.co.za. Jenna. Shall we just get into this whole obesity situation? Yes, I've read so much about it, um, but my, the, what, what scares me the most is obesity in children. And I mean, with the stats saying between 2 and 14, that's very scary. So for some of our viewers, what is obesity? Simply put, um, obesity is basically the excess of fat that can then negatively, negatively impact on a child's health. Yeah. Um, you know, in terms of definition of what obesity is, you're looking at an elevated BMI, or more specifically for children, mm -hmm. when plotting them on a growth chart, they would be falling above the 85th to 95th centile, therefore mm -hmm. showing that their weight or their BMI for age is actually relatively elevated. Mm -hmm. So in terms of obesity, it is hugely prevalent within South Africa, actually internationally as well. So it's a huge prevalence um, and they even are saying now that research is showing that being obese even 
the ripe age of two, you can carry that over into adulthood, putting yourself at risk for other diseases of lifestyle, things yeah. like diabetes, high blood pressure, yes. certain cancers, heart mm. problems, and so on. So it really is a health concern that we do need to tackle. Shall we go into Paula's question? I want to know how can I deal with childhood obesity? And uh, <sighs> we need to sort it out from the top. I don't That's think it's thing. always the child's fault. No, I guess yeah. a lot of parents say to me they don't have time to cook or to prepare food, so they give the child spending money. Then the yes. child goes and spends the money on whatever. You know, but how do we fix that? Okay, so first of all, I mean, you could look at giving their child a different options to what they can be spending them, their money on. Instead of wasting it on sweets, chips, chocolates, yeah. things that they want right now, yeah. we can teach them in that regard, you know, the, the value of money. Um, we can also show them or set standards as parents as to what you would rather treat or choose in terms of food choice. You've just made that so hard because there's already parents who are drinking this. And a lot of kids are drinking this because they see their parents drinking this. Fizzy drinks. This is just one EG. Yes, and this is actually one of the biggest culprits which contributes towards childhood obesity. Yeah. And it's full, full, full of refined sugars, up to 13 teaspoons per can alone. What? Yes, and we'll happily give them up to a litre a day, actually, if you're keeping a two-litre oh. bottle in fridge. How yeah. much sugar is that in too your much, system? Way too Shoots much. Shoots the glucose levels up, yes, immediately exactly. diabetes. You know, Jenna, you brought something else which a lot of people tend to think is much better than fizzy drinks. For a while I thought so too, but you need to explain to them why. Yes, this is possibly one of the most controversial and, um, you know, cool drinks that people are having on a pretty regular basis. And it's fruit juice, it's juicing diets. It's basically taking out all the fiber from what you would get of eating a whole fruit yes. and condensing the sugar. So some fruit juices, 100% pure fruit juices, concentrates, whatever it might be, sometimes actually have more sugar content than a simple fizzy cool drink. I mean, I've seen where it says, to whatever fruit juice blend. Yes. And I'm like, what is this in this blend? What is it blended with? And that's what I've, that's where I've picked it up. Yes. So you wouldn't, you wouldn't, so would you rather say water as a, as a as a liquid to, to wash down? Definitely. Water, general hydration with, you know, good, clean, safe water is something that's really, really important. Mm. And then, like chips, chocolate, sweets, all of those things, mm. these need to be put into the same context. So they're not for everyday consumption. Mm. It should definitely be a treat that's provided maybe on a family brunch on a, you know, a family yeah. holiday of some yeah. sort. Jenna, how about we listen to Polite's next question? Which foods are good? for them to avoid childhood obesity? The yes foods, the good foods. Yes. So shall we start with some yes foods? Hmm. I see you brought some chicken breasts or some skinless chicken with some tuna. Yes. Okay. Protein, really important. It's the building blocks for growth and development, mm -hmm. for strong, um, strong and stable immune system, stopping our kitties from getting sick. Mm -hmm. And this we should really be including a variety, but of good lean sources. Mm -hmm. um, skinless chicken is a fantastic lean source of protein, as are eggs, low-fat dairy products. Mm -hmm. um, and also really important for brain or cognitive development is actually fish oily mm. fish sources in particular, and one we can get readily available um, is tin tuna. So mm. this is something we should definitely be including on a day-to-day -day basis. Jenna, what is it in the, in the canned tuna that's, that's good for kids? So like all food, um, different proteins have different properties or mm. criteria that they fulfill. And what we find in canned tuna, it's actually an oily fish. So it's a really rich source of omega-3 fatty acids, which mm. is actually the only um, kind of product that we get from, from oily fish is omega-3s. Mm. It's not found in your chicken or your beef or your red meat. So it is important to include it. And like you said, it's an alternative. It's one of your three or four choices of protein you would include in a, in a child's lunchbox. I hear you. And this is something that I found very attractive, I'm sure. Any parent or kid would find this very appealing, right? They might, um, until you get all the fussy children out there that really have all these kind of ideas that fruits and veggies aren't very appetizing. Mm. Um, 
But look at the colours. I mean, that's exactly what you're trying to give your child is a rainbow. Different coloured fruits, different coloured veggies give you a range of vitamins and minerals. Yeah. So it is important that we do feed our children a range of colours when it comes to fruit and, re and veggies. And you may have mm. heard the, the concept of eat a rainbow. That's where it's coming from. Oh, please explain that to me. That sounds okay. great. So eating rainbow means that you're eating foods from different kind of coloured palettes as well. So you've got your yellow or orange um, veggies, things like carrots, sweet mm, potato, mm. Um, and butternut, and these are actually rich in vitamin A, and those are good for eyesight. Yes. So that's why your mom might have said when you were a child, eat your carrots, eat your carrots. Ah. you can see it at the, in, um, at the night or yes. during the night. Um, then you've got your green veggies, which are a really good source of iron, um, and also a good source of, of uh, vitamin B, e. and that's mm. really important for energy. Mm -hmm. And then you've got your other ones, like your reds and your purples, and that keeps it really nice and exciting for the child. I love that. Eat what? Eat a rainbow? Eat a rainbow. Eat a rainbow. My yeah. little rainbow. Yeah. Wow. And then here's my favorite. I love nuts and I love seeds. So nuts and seeds, as to omega-3 fatty acids, like we found in the tuna, tuna. or any of your oily fish, your poultries, your mackerel, etc. Mm -hmm. um, these are actually fantastic for brain or cognitive development mm. as well, as well as our other host of factors. They're a great source of fiber for digestion. Mm. And these are what we might term your, your healthy fats mm. or your essential fatty acids. And mm. those are um, examples of here, your nuts and seeds, as well as things like avo and your good types of cooking oil, your olive, your canola, and even your sunflower oil. So this could be a, a snack for my child going to school. Yes, you know what definitely. You say? So it's a nice healthy snack. Fats help with slowing down of digestion and mm -hmm. what that actually means is it helps keep um, kitties fuller for longer. Um, it's also a fantastic source of energy so it would be a brilliant snack to be given. You know what, for our viewers, look, we need to talk about the bird seeds because till today I'm still getting Facebook messages and Instagram going, come in, know, how do we eat bird seed? Please give me an advice as a, as a dietitian. How, how, how do I go ahead with this? Yes. Seeds are actually incredibly versatile. What I generally tell people to do is actually use them for added flavor. Mm. So just eating a seed by itself or a handful of seeds is really not that appetizing. I completely agree with your views yeah. in that sense, but you can actually change them and use them for extra flavor. So you can sprinkle them over um, yogurt with a little bit of fruit as a breakfast option. Mm. They add a lovely crunch to salads, so that's where you can include them as well. Um, and they're actually delicious toasted and added as a topping to things like soups or roasted vegetables. How do I toast them? Simply get a pan, no oil, no anything needed, and toss them around over a very low heat. You'll actually start to get that enhanced um, smell when the natural oils start to come out. Are you showing that a chef as well? It is a passion. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, favorite, H2O, yes. water. Definitely. Look, I know there's a whole thing now, we need to save water, but I think we need to still drink yeah. a lot of water. Well, it's something that, that is pretty readily available to us within South Africa. It's also a good, clean, safe way of maintaining hydration, which is hugely important for us. I mm. mean, hydration can help with concentration at school um, and all sorts of other really important factors. So it is something we need to make sure our children are getting enough of. Mm -hmm. um, and flavoring it naturally by chopping up some fresh slices of fruit, some oranges, some mint leaves, actually gives it a really nice natural fruity flavor yes. with none of that other sugar that we saw earlier in the yes. fizzy cool drinks. Okay, I'm interested in Polite's next question. How can I prepare a healthy food in an appealing way for my kids? I love this, now we're finding solutions. How can she do this? Well, like I said at the very beginning, a lot of planning and home prepping does give her that complete control over what she gives her child mm -hmm. for a good learning day at school. So let's have a look. You brought something good here. I love this. More than the colour, just the nutrients in here. Hmm. Please go through it. Okay, so, um, you know, even irrespective of time of day, we need to make sure that we're maintaining our meal structure. Mm -hmm. When I talk to structure, structure, what I mean is the inclusion of your food group. So having some source of whole grain, some source of lean protein, and you know a good consumption of mm. your um, veggies as well. Mm -hmm. So my source of whole grain today is actually a very simple tuna mayonnaise sandwich. Nice. Um, the tuna, like we spoke about earlier, is a really good source of lean protein. Mm. Um, mayonnaise, a healthy fat. I have used the light mayonnaise for this example. And what I've also actually done here, if we take a closer look, 
is snack in a few um, so cucumber. veggies, some cucumber, nice. some onion. It's a good way of upping your veggie intake and kind of hiding it from the child who yes. might be too aware of what, what you're What kind of bread in. is this? It looks... So this is a low GI bread. Um, there are lots of different brands that you can you can find on, um, in supermarkets today. It's a really nice high fiber filling bread, mm -hmm. and that's going to actually assist with sustaining a child's energy throughout the day um, and keep them really nice and full, so able to concentrate and learn during. Time. Yes. Okay. Next we have and um, making sure that the kitty's lunchbox is really nice and colourful. Um, a mixture of fruit. Nice. Now we know kitties have a huge sweet tooth, mm. so why not include some of nature's sweets into a lunchbox? And mm -hmm. here I suggest a variety as well. When it comes to a serving size of your fruit, mm. you're looking at about the size of a small fist or a tennis ball, or making up one cup. So examples I've got here is five relatively large strawberries, strawberries yeah. and a small bunch of grapes. Nice. Um, and here I really suggest you include your child in what fruit they enjoy. Mm. Why I say that is if you include them, they are more likely to actually eat it uh -huh. and enjoy it and not try and bribe friends for some yes. extra sweets or swap outs. Yes. So the lastly to go into the lunchbox, I'm just going to reach over here, mm. is some common veggies that kitties do actually enjoy mm. eating. So here what we've got is some carrot sticks, carrots, nice natural source mm. of sweetness, a little bit of crunch added to mm. the meal as well. And so are these rosa baby tomatoes. Fantastic source of vitamins and minerals and also a really good um, you know, snack to include yes. for, to fill a child's stom uh, stomach at school. Mm. So into the lunchbox we can look at putting um, our sandwich. So that fits in nicely over here. Mm. And just to make sure our food doesn't go too soggy, we can keep this in a little tuck way to fit perfectly oh, over here nice. with the inclusion of your fruit of choice to make sure that it is really, really nice and colorful. Now, Sweet. a common question that we also get asked is actually what you can use as an alternative to crisps. Yes. And what a better, there's no better kind of economical, easy source and popcorn. Hmm. So here we've got a serving size of popcorn. It's about a cup and a half um, once it's popped, not hmm. in kernels, yes. to be excessive. But just you control the amount of oil you are adding and the amount of salt you're adding, hmm. all kind of limiting to a degree. And that a child can have as an inclusion, as a snack for maybe after school um, or when they get home. Could parents buy the, the ready made popcorn at the supermarket and just use that? Would that also it's work? something again that where we say prepping or planning your food that you're doing yourself is actually gaining that control. So mm. if you look at the ingredients list of a lot of those products, there's MSGs, there's yes. preservatives, there's yes. additives, yes. all things that something fresh and home popped is not going to contain. Makes sense. Yes, definitely. Mm. Okay, and last thing we've got here for the viewers today is an idea of a really quick and easy, tasty snack for the afternoon. So we've got some rice cakes. Mm -hmm. These are pretty well tolerated by most people. They're nice soft fiber, although a good source of fiber. Mm -hmm. We also have some peanut butter. Now, Best. this is a household favorite for most households. Um, what I have here is a sugar-free, salt-free one. You can get them from a number of different brands as well, and they really are a really good economical source of healthy fats. You did mean, I did mention that it was sugar-free. So yes. why not do a better sauce? There's no better sauce um, With banana. than a banana. And you forget your potassium. Exactly, and, and adding a little bit of natural sweetness. So kitties are all about you know, how stuff looks, so make it look nice and, and creative. A serving size of peanut butter is about um, two teaspoons, which fits pretty nicely onto two rice cakes, as mm. we've seen here today. Okay, so what we can then do, let's put this one aside for a second, okay. is slice the banana into nice thin slices. Oh, nice. Again, one banana more than enough to make, it, make its way onto two different rice cakes. Mm and place it neatly on top, easy for the child to eat, and a really nice sweet yeah. alternative. And also I think it looks pretty tasty it myself. It looks tasty. So that's a nice wow. healthy burst of energy, something you could definitely include um, for your child after school as a snack, pre-exercise, put it in their lunchbox. It's divine. Easy, fun for them to do themselves as well. You're incredible. I told you you're a chef. This is great, I mean this is a great, I mean instead of having cake you can have this. Exactly. Wow. 
Oh my goodness. Wow, Jenna excites me. I feel like me and with all this lovely yummy food. I know when I come to your phone daily, I'm sure I'm going to go far as well. Angaz, I'm going to go Twitter or at DJ Lebo Pilo or on Facebook at DJ Lebo Pilo or email me DJ Lebo Pilo at sabc.co.za. I'm going to go Instagram. Instagram me your plate or this captain saying I need to something you've learned from my expert here. This interview is being posted online for all polite to view and also take notes. You can also log on and watch it again on our YouTube page on SABC Education. After the break, say ha, but say go polite to hear what she has learned from Mina Nochen. Okay, fine, from Uchen. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Usasa na mela gudi jo lebo pilo on SABC2. Sasa thanga na no polite earlier on in the show. Ene bufunu was guti. How do you deal with childhood obesity? Inga ni engati inkulu kakul for the age yaki. Because she fears for the child's health. She's seen ngo koyam no jena online. Let's touch base no polite and find out what she picked up from today's conversation with our expert. I'm very happy with the information I received from the dietitian. We as parents, it's our duty to control our health by eating vegetables, fruits, and drink many water so that our children will learn from us. I'm also glad that the dietitian gave me an example of what can I prepare for my kids when they go to school for lunch. I can give them popcorns and Instead of chocolates, I give them bananas. Instead of juice, I can prepare them water and put some fruits inside for attraction. As a parent, now I know Uguti Abanda Nang Banigas or Ugupugu Lang Abanigas Ugupugu. Gitanda Ugubonga eat teacher, Nale information Abangi Payona, Azon Caesar Ugutingi control in Pilo Abandanaban. I will see Penelope show you to get a massage. Caught on a catazek, and as with the Inmako, Yakubega was social media. Over long Facebook, you would see the Lebu Pillow, or wrong Twitter at the Jo Lebu Pillow, or wrong email, the Jalebu Pillow at sabc.co.zere, Zontola da, Corner Manji. By getting no good, they show the ends alone. Good near the lesson, cool leg, this was a zonke bonke mile and no good. Nang bamba via email, social media, or over Luham be a person, unlatling in what. Quasban, we can be your question will be the question of the week for next week's show. Mastanga ne lagwa SABC2 for more Dijo Libo Pilo. Same place, same time. Uzobukon. <laughs>